we are uh, on Greenwich and Rectory Street. So I need you to use your imagination, all right? Mm -hmm. If this was uh, New Amsterdam back in the day, um, we'd be walking right along the edge of the river. Uh, the river would be like right here, you know, where... Um, and now it's parking. Yes. This is now battery parking. Um, There's somebody watching me down. He was trying to talk about how he wanted to have like humor in hip hop and rap and whatnot. Instead of just like being serious like the Germans. Stereotypically. <laughs> You know I'm half English, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's helpful. <laughs> All right. And we're also seeing pigeons. Uh, Mariel, is this your first, like, kind of real trip to New York City with mom? It is, isn't it? Sort of. Sort of. You know, it's like being able to walk around and stuff and, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. So, so this is fun. Yes? Yeah. Are we having any fun? No. Yes. yes. Cool. All right, so, um, Russell Shorto, uh, very like yay Dutch people. And you know, I'm half German, so I understand anyone who's yay anything that's not German. <laughs> uh, but um, there's another historian, he's actually a, an art historian, which you said you were really into, mm -hmm. art history. Um, he was at Williams College and the Clark, and he's now at the University of Rochester. His name is um, Christopher P. Hoyer, and I saw this really awesome lecture um, of his where he was talking about the old fort, and one of the people at the time who had to shelter in the old fort was complaining about how badly constructed this fort was you know, it really wasn't uh, entirely completed. Um, and according to Hoyer, um, you know, the fort actually never got completed the entire time. When the British took over New Amsterdam, the fort also wasn't completed. So, um, as with most things, you know, you've got people who are very enthusiastic, um, who like to view things in one way, and then you have people who are like, hey, let's put the brakes on that. You know, here's some other evidence that maybe it's not entirely as, as idyllic as you thought it was. So, that is where we are walking to right now. We are walking to Battery Park. Mariel, why don't you talk more about your impressions of New York right now? Mm. We just got here. Mm. So New York is sort of like, you know, that one city where uh, it's based like the entire world summarized. And uh, extremely diverse. I mean, you have little Chinatown, little Italy. You even have like some high fashion Indian stuff here and there. Like, I literally saw, like, I don't know, like a Bohu sort of clothing store right next to, like, this really intricately designed Indian store that had, like, a uh, uh, Middle Eastern lighting, you know? So I could tell that it was at least, at the very least, Middle Eastern. Which is really cool. I support that. Uh, and I guess there's also like... I believe that people have liberal tendencies on one spectrum and conservative tendencies on the other spectrum. Like people would mostly vary from like liberal in one side in like one problem and conservative in another problem. 
So personally, I would be like very liberal in immigration and letting people in. Of course, you need to like security checks and whatnot. Right. However, however, yeah. personally, I <laughs> personally, you know, I think it's really cool how diverse New York City is. Good. All right. So, um, the only reason why I stepped in the middle of this, we are, daughter, yeah. <laughs> we are now at the Battery, and this was the site of the original fort. Yeah. So, and the original fort, um, you know, again, was up against uh, the shoreline. So, you see all the way over there where the river is? camera all the way over there um the river was actually all the way up here and the fort was all the way up here yeah. so you can tell like how much um humans in new york have changed the environment here um they uh you know they put fill all around a lot all of this is built on fill um so originally you would be standing almost in water like about like a minute that way you'd be standing in water now the other thing i want you to imagine take away all of these buildings um imagine you know kind of this pristine river right here imagine a fort built of wood with palisades um kind of not very well constructed you know but it is the tallest building here so not that building, not that building, not that building, but a fort right here. That's the tallest building. Um, and uh, from what I've read, um, you know, the island of Manhattan, specifically lower Manhattan, uh, you know, was actually, it actually had hills. Um, you know, it had a huge pond. So imagine this area, you know, very idyllic in terms of nature. Um, you know, you know like the Windows XP wallpaper. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, pretty much. You know, so you have a fort over there. With like the, one building, which is like a woodlock fort. Yeah, huge woodlock fort. And then you have smaller houses along here. Um, but even in that environment, there is this idea of building a grid. So even, you know, with a shoddily built fort and smaller family homes, um, I think there was maybe about, uh, I'd have to check, but I think it's about 30 families um, who uh, moved here in 1624. Um, the original inhabitants of New Amsterdam were all employees of the Dutch West India Company. Yes, they were all employees. Well, the ones who were here voluntarily. The involuntary ones were enslaved by the yep. Dutch West India Company. Yep. Um, you know, so, but the ones who were here voluntarily were employees um, and they were of all different nationalities. Uh, you had, you know, not one exclusive religion represented, which is forward looking, um, you know, but in a few minutes, I, I'm going to show you what I think is actually probably one of the most important things about American history that nobody really talks about. Um, I got to get my directions. So.